Hello and welcome to So What You're Saying Is. I'm Peter Whittle. Now I'm delighted that this week my guest is one of our most popular actors from television and film and of course he's done a lot of theatre too. James Dreyfus, uh, you will know from The Thin Blue Line, from Gimme 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 and indeed from Absolutely Fabulous before that. Uh, he's also one of the better reasons to re-watch Notting Hill. Um, Thank you very much for coming on, James. Oh, what a pleasure. Thank you. It's great to see you. Um, <laughs> I want to put you right in at the deep end. Uh, um, recently, someone in your profession, James, uh, Graham Norton, uh, said that there was no such thing as cancel culture and uh, that it was a matter of accountability. What, what do you say to that? Well, um, Number one, um, uh, Graham is a friend of mine and has been a friend of mine for a very long time. So I'm not going to um, uh, um, <clears throat> um, really put him put him down or anything. But but I think what's happened is 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 that um, it's it's too simple this answer. It's accountability um, because what you, what you have at the moment are ordinary women mostly, but also happening to men yeah. who question an ideology and which is all they have to do ask a question or like a tweet and they are descended on by uh, uh, really the online version of a mob with pitchforks mm. and it's not just a question of um getting you uh, getting you no work it's a question of contacting your employers of contacting your friends of sometimes even doxing uh, you yeah. Um, and it's a, an entire process, and the outcome you would have thought would be a an apology and a retraction, a tra retraction. But of course, that makes it worse because it, that's not that's not the point. It the the process is the punishment. Yeah, yeah. And it um, it is that's what it is. So maybe uh, Graham had a point about saying cancel culture is the wrong word. It's just a word we use like gender critical, just so you know what people are talking about. Mm. Not everyone agrees with it, but there is certainly something nefarious going on. Let's call it nefarious culture then. Right. I mean, you, you've you been obviously a, a, a victim of this nefarious culture in that way, haven't you? With your, could you tell us about what happened with Doctor Who? Yes, uh, very, very briefly, because I've told this uh, quite often. I was playing the master for a, a, an audio company, Big Finished. Um, I um, was called by Graham Linehan, who had given me my first job and was a very old friend. Yeah. And he said, look, uh, J.K. Rowling is getting death threats and uh, uh, rape threats uh, because of this article she wrote. So I read the article, thought it was an incredibly passionate plea uh, for trans women and for women in general. So I thought, of course I'll sign it. And I also signed a letter asking Stonewall for respectful debate. Uh, the next thing I knew was on uh, Big Finish's website, they were saying, we do not support or endorse homo uh, transphobia in any way. Right. Um, <clears throat> which, of course, what this did was implicitly uh, imply that I had been um, transphobic. And I found my name disappearing off the merchandise. Right. I found my photographs disappearing off merchandise. They released um, um, an audio of um, all the people that had played the master. I, I was left off that. Really? Um, and I had to call my agent several times to say, is there a problem? Have, have I done something to annoy them? What, I, what is going on? And eventually, after a couple of months, my agent rang me back and said, ah, well, now, they're now saying there is a problem. So it's not so much, I mean, I didn't really care much about the job. It was, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know anything about Doctor Who, but it's the principle. If they had called me or emailed me or got in touch and said, yes. look, we have a conflict of interest. Can we talk about it? Yes. Fine. But what they didn't, they didn't do that. Behind my back, they said transphobic and threw me to the wolves publicly. And this was just uh, because you had signed or added your name to a letter. Is that right? To two letters to the yeah, Times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's been the overall effect of that, James, on, on your career? Well, uh, over the past couple of years, I've noticed, I mean, it could have been because of COVID. You don't really know this is the thing. Mm. Um, I mean, I don't really know in, in the past how many jobs I lost for being gay. Obviously, I lost a few, 
which you'll never know. Mm. Now, uh, I'm losing it by, I guess, by association, or you know, people just don't want. Um, oh no, I could people. I could hear people saying, "Oh no, that's trouble." Mm. So it doesn't mean that you're cancelled completely. Mm. Mm. People will still employ you, mm. but your chances and your reputation have gone way down. So I spend most of my time trying to say to people, well, please find me evidence of this. Please, yeah. I don't delete my tweets. I don't, they're not private. You can read anything you want. Yeah. You can read the essays I've written about it. Point, point to something. My issue is with the TRAs who send death and rape threats. Uh, PR is being uh, uh, trans radical activists, right. which could be anyone. They don't have to be trans. They yeah. could be. They just could be anyone. Just trolls. Yes. Really. Yes. What is your What is your main objection to them in that case? <clears throat> um, well, it's a conflict of interest, really. It's one group um, not asking but demanding access to another group's rights. Yeah. And I don't believe one any one group has the right to impinge on upon another group's rights. People uh, compare this to the fight for gay rights in the eighties. It's not similar at all. That that that's a, that's a lie. We were fighting against real hatred and real mm. beatings and real deaths. Mm -hmm. um, Matthew Shepard, for mm -hmm. example. I mean, you know, there's a lot of them, mm. and that's what I. And it's the aggressive way in which it's done. You know. Mm. They're, women are often told to, my lady. Yeah, yeah. And you think to yourself, well, why would any woman mm -hmm. or young girl or vulnerable woman want to share um, uh, uh, any space with someone who so evidently hates them? Yes. I'm not saying all uh, transsexuals mm -hmm. uh, um, feel that because they don't. I have plenty of transsexual friends mm -hmm. who don't, who are finding this whole thing wretched. Yes. What do you make of the, I mean, ally to this, what do you make of the whole sort of, um, you know, the the drag queen, uh, you know, story time with, mm -hmm. with children? I mean, does, do, do you object to that? Or not? Well, you, you see, drag is a very different thing. Trouble is, you, I think today you have a lot of very bad drag queens. Yeah. Um, uh, they back, just lip sync. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. I, I don't think RuPaul's Drag Race has done any favours because it's all about innuendo and sort of mock, making a mockery of women. In the olden days, you had um, people like Danny LaRue, who yes. was like wasn't yeah. mocking women in, in yeah. any way, shape, or form. Then you had Lindy Savage and Regina Fong, who were very obviously men, yeah. made no pretensions to be a woman at all, and were very, very funny people. Yeah, yeah. So there's an art to drag, and I think that the people who just put on uh, lipstick now and go out and make jokes about, you know, breasts and vaginas mm. and things, I don't find that funny. You've mm. got to have funny bones, you've got to pull it off. Yeah. And if you're lampooning a woman, I don't like it, but then I've never liked um, a, a drag like that. No, I, I, I'd agree with you actually. It's always made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. A lot of people say well, it's like the kind of, it's the gay version of blackface in a way, you know, mm. it's sort of, I've always found this is kind of a cartoonish version of women, mm. usually working class women as well. Actually. Yes, it yes, always is. Yes, you know. Yes, um, but you're quite right about Danny Rue. My mother loved Danny Rue. She didn't even think there was anything you offensive. Know, about and it. also, Barry Humphreys gets away yes. with it because um, he's a, a comic genius. Yeah. So he doesn't. And he's also not, lamp not lampooning being a woman. Yes. He's lampooning being a very rich, successful yeah. uh, woman. So there are exceptions. Yes. I guess it depends on how clever mm. you are. Mm. And there are plenty of old school, brilliant mm. drag artists who seek neither to denigrate or impersonate or lampoon women. But I find nowadays it is all about the just you know, uh, well, making them look rather silly, yes, really. Yes. Um, how do you feel about, you, know, you You say, you know, almost by accident, maybe, you're very, uh, you're very uh, active on Twitter. You know, um, you talked at the Battle of Ideas this week, didn't you, which yes. I was at as yes. well. Um, it's a sort of a, it's a different, it's almost a different career now for you, isn't it? Or is that, do you view it that way? Well, um, for a start, I would never want to be an a an activist. Um, I don't like that word. Um, I just all I do uh, is really on Twitter is speak up for women. Don't speak on their behalf. Yeah. 
I'd, I'd, I'd hate to wake up every day and have to go into battle. I mean, sometimes I do on Twitter. Um, yeah. Sometimes I ignore them. But it, this is not a subject one can just dip your toe into and decide, mm, it's a bit hot for me. I'm going to leave now because they won't, it, it, I mean, they won't leave you alone. So this is something you, you've got to make a choice. Yeah. You either stand with... Um, women who have lots of valid points uh, about, you know, religiously and culturally, Muslim and Jewish women can't, are being affected. There's, there's going to, but it's not, it's, it's not so much that, it's the way it's being done. Yes. It's you will accept me in your bathroom, in your space, I've been there. And if I could tell you that I've got, I've got a, thousands and thousands of screenshots of this being sent to women. So no wonder women go, well, you know what? Mm. I, I, I'm, I'm slightly wary of being in a space with you. Yeah, yeah. You know? And this, this is not, again, it's not transsexuals who have been through, um, you know, surgery. And yes. I think it's a very different thing mm. altogether. Mm. Well, actually, quite a, it, it's a trend, apparently, not even to bother to have surgery anymore. Uh, that, that's growing in, and growing. It's, it's not a, uh, you know, it's not like April Ashley or whatever. Going no. Way back. Um, I just wanted to go back well, to one thing you said about, you know, uh, the kind of making fun of women. Do you think then that in the, in the more extreme parts of the trans movement, there is a real misogyny? I think it's all, all stems from misogyny. Yeah. All stems, uh, everything I've seen stems from misogyny. This is misogyny <coughs> rebooted. Yeah. Well, it's never gone away, really. But this is people have been given authority to behave towards women how they want now, yeah. and you know to call um, uh, veteran feminist campaigners like Jermaine Greer mm. and Julie Bindel and uh, or, or the recent uh, ladies who've been through this, uh, Alison Bailey and, and Maya mm. Forstetter, to call them dinosaurs and and um, old turfs mm. and, and cis women, I think is a real insult to them. I mean, a real insult, mm. because um, this is, believe me, when you hear, oh, it's both sides. Yes, I will admit there are some people on the GC side whose voice, you know, does mm. not help. Mm. But the majority comes from America yeah. Yeah. and in very vicious, violent sexual imagery. They've all got the anime little um, uh, posters for their things, which is usually holding a gun saying, shuck the up yeah, earth yeah it's a very aggressive male mm, aggressive mm, um mm. attack on women yes I, I can only put it down to um misogyny yes yes i mean do you think as well that there is this problem or has it been perhaps exaggerated i've seen a few things on twitter recently for example uh where actual being gay is almost being denied now by the trans lobby i mean uh, there was a clip of a woman saying uh, there's no such thing as homosexuality because it's there's nothing there's no such thing as binary choice mm -hmm. or something. and you sort of sit and you sort of think you know being gay as well we spent ages you mm. know in <laughs> sort of like fighting and then somehow from what otherwise would be considered the same side mm -hmm. you know this is coming it's extraordinary isn't it? we are uh, I, uh, we are I've seen that as well. There's something called the boxer ceiling, which, yeah. if you look that up, on um, is is the homophobic abuse. Um, I, I've been told numerous times the very fact that I am same-sex attracted, and I say I'm same-sex attracted, um, and just you know, um, not have people in my dating pool is my right as a gay man. I, I'm only attracted to men. Yes. There's no reason why I'd be attracted to anyone else. Yes. But by default. I am transphobic, I've been told. Yes. So uh, we're now in a situation where um, I, there was this image, I must tell you this quickly, there was this image that was going around Twitter for a while, and it was a man, it was a woman uh, with a tra covered in a trans flag, um, and there was a gay man kneeling at her feet covered in the equality flag, and she had her head, her, her foot on his head. Really? And I sent this to um, someone called Simon, who uh, was at Stonewall, saying, Please, could you comment on this? I mean, as a gay yeah. rose, please, could you just make a comment on this? Because this is really yeah. demeaning. I think I heard nothing, nothing. back. Yeah. I don't believe Stonewall work for um, 
uh, uh, gay and lesbian and bisexual people anymore. Right. So is it any wonder that the um, LGB alliance was formed, it which is for gay? Yeah, I mean, th I was just going to ask you about that next, actually. Uh, LGB alliance is simply um, lesbian and gay alliance. Yes. Yes, simple as. So not the whole alphabet people thing. It's no. LGB alliance. And you, 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 you're a great supporter. I've been, to I, I sub, I've been to the conference. I know them personally. The idea it's a hate group is just a laughable lie. Yeah, yeah. Um, w w one of the ladies was in the original Gay Lib. One used to work for um, Stonewall. Um, uh, Right-wing money coming for... It's, it's all a lie. It's all, mm. it's all a lie mm. to discredit them. They did the same with lesbian and gay news mm. online. And, uh, you know, anything they don't like, they will try to destroy. Yeah. Um, it is the only one left in England for LGB because LGB people's cons concerns are very might be very different. Mm. That's not to say they exclude transsexuals. They do not. There were plenty of transsexuals at the last LGBA um, uh, conference. Yeah, plenty. Mm. So, it, it, but again, you don't want to believe something you don't believe it, and you'll spread muck uh, just to discredit it. Yes, uh, they, they, I do think that they do. Uh, fantastic, fantastic work. Uh, do you think that the the gay media, therefore, and the, uh, the what, what we used to call the gay media, the gay establishment, whatever, are they pretty much? They seem to me to be pretty much working against gay people now. Actually, whether it's Pink News or whether it is uh, Stonewall. Well, Pink News is a disgrace. I mean, an absolute disgrace. I wouldn't put them as a news thing. I think more like Whizzer and Chips. Um, <laughs> online um I, I i i think what they are is absolutely terrified of um you know making one wrong move that's mm. the strength that um this movement the ideology movement has over them they're absolutely terrified look what they did to um david brindle mm. um over the lesbian and, and gay news i mean they just destroyed it boys magazine uh, uh said listen give the la uh, the LGBA alliance listen just give just hear them out mm. boycotts from every single part, gay establishment mm. um, you can think mm. of so uh, yes the gay press uh, uh, I it's divided now into the Q thugs and the um, uh, and the rest of us mm. you know I, I always thought we were working towards a world of equality <laughs> you, you must remember yeah. the equality <laughs> shows Oh yes, uh, where we yeah. all went to, and we were, uh, you know, people were saying to me, "Isn't it, it's, isn't it marvelous? One day you'll be known as James Dreyfus the actor, yes, not, not the James Dreyfus the gay actor." Yes, yes. That's what I thought we were working towards, and that's yes. what I was told we were. Yeah. And it seems to have been an awful sort of lie. Well, th that really brings me to the oh, it's wider discussion about this. You say the, you know, the gay actor, um, identity politics. Right uh, now, basically, adjectives are put in front of everyone's name, whatever. I would have thought, that, I mean, how are they affecting your business, the business of the uh, business of the arts, show business, call it what you like. What is the effect of identity politics, if at all? Well, we've got this whole discussion going on at the moment about, you know, who should be playing what parts. If you're, um, if you're Jewish, you, be, you, should, you could be playing a Jewish part. If you're um, if you're old and infirm, you should be old and infirm to play. Which, to me, it, it's uh, defeating the whole point of being an actor. That's that's the first thing. Uh, number two, um, uh, the example of Terry Gilliam trying to get uh, into the woods, into the old Vic. Yes. Now, I'm willing to bet that it was the staff that went to the management and said, we won't work with Terry Gilliam. I think it was, yes. Yes. Uh, and that is a case of the tail wagging the dog. Mm -hmm. um, someone should really turn around and say, look, you work here. If you don't like it, leave. Mm -hmm. And we will employ other people who really want to put on theatre. Mm -hmm. Terry Gilliam, Into the Woods, what an amazing mix. Of course he's going to say uh, sort of ribald things and things. He's a member of Monty Python and has mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. for years. And he was making a joke. This is another thing. Uh, and I just think now everything is becoming so... I hate to use the word PC because it's, it's meaningless now. I woke, think it's gone way beyond PC. Way, way beyond PC, way beyond woke. And they've done the same thing to the word woke. It, it's become almost draconian. Now, if you sit in a... If you go to a, a rehearsals, I've heard that you have to sit in a pronoun circle 
and you say, hello, my name is James and my pronouns are he, him, really? which is absolutely fine if people want to do that. Mm. But if I turned around and said, hi, just call me James, I would be, I'd be, get, I'd get, sorry, so yes, you don't yes. have your pronouns. And the intimation would be you're transphobic because it's not a question, it's a test. Yes, yes. So it is having an effect then, obviously. I mean, uh, you know, I would have thought though as well that on a broader level, when you come to writers, uh, dramatists, TV writers, whatever, there is this thing now, I've spoke to, uh, spoken to Lionel Shriver, you know, the novelist yes, on this yes. program. And she was talking about this stay in your lane idea which meant that essentially meaning you can't imagine yourself into another position yes I, I think she's got the nail on the head i mean it is it literally stay in your lane how could you possibly know about mm. another person's lived experience well that's precisely what actors do yeah it would be very interesting to hear what daniel day lewis would have to say someone who uses the method of getting completely inside the thing otherwise if you're making a film about minors don't bother uh, uh, hiring actors. Mm. Hire minors. Mm, mm. You, you know, then the art goes out the window. Just hire if, that, if the authenticity is what you want. Yeah. You hire good, authentic actors. That's what acting is all about. Is yeah. you try and make it as real and as authentic as possible. I recently did a film called Supernova, with um, uh, Colin Firth and Stanley Tucci playing a gay couple who had been mm. together for ages, and they were. I'm sorry, you could watch that film and you wouldn't bat an eyelid. You'd go, my God, they were so brilliant, yeah, yeah, so yeah, convincing. Yeah. That's all you need is good actors. And you believe it. They didn't need to have a lifetime of experience no, no, of knowing no. what it's like to sleep with men. They act it. Yes. But that is, as you say, the absolute essence of it, isn't it? So in a way, it's a bit like women sort of being under attack, the idea of being a woman. Yeah. Even the, the idea of being an actor is almost under attack, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's not going in a good direction. I mean, it's really not. Mm. Um, we're going to have soon, you know, I, I bet you at any moment soon, the whole pantomime dame debate is going well, to come yes, up. Yes, because you know that's something they bring up, isn't it? They, they, you know, they say, well, what's so different between this and, uh, you know, there have been clips on Twitter of drag queens in America, for example, you know, sort of like really being lewd actually in front of kids or, and, and kids dancing on stage. And I said, well, what, well, how different is this to pantomime dame? The whole thing is different, surely. It, it's completely different. Putting, stuffing um, $5 notes yes. into the pants of five-year-old children twerking on stage yes. is a completely different thing. And my worry, this is my worry, my worry is that because we're all now put under one homogenous umbrella yeah. by Stonewall, that uh, the groups, uh, the actions of one group are going to bleed into the actions of other people right. under that umbrella. And we're going to see a rise in um, homophobia, transphobia, bipolar, all the, but we're going to see a rise in it because there's no distinction, right. which is why we're trying to separate at the moment between yes. the Q thugs and the rest yes. uh, who go out to provoke um, who say what's wrong with you know twerking with a, a you know a four-year-old or or doing a naked show for mm. um five-year-olds yes, which yes. was thing because people are going to say this is not appropriate yes yes we just spent the last 50 years getting rid of the tag oh homosexual you know, yeah yeah father we 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 got mm. rid of that mm. and now i say i'm seeing a comeback and yes. it's really really depressing Oh yes, uh, no, exactly. That was one of the the other thing as well is that when it comes to sort of the the whole gender debate generally, um, there is this odd thing when you were growing up, you know, um, and supposing you liked playing with dolls or dressing up, and you're a, a young kid boy, uh, you know, it used to be the Victorian approach would be well, he's obviously a girl, you know, and everything. Um, but of course that wasn't the case. You kind of grow up to be maybe a gay man. Yeah. Now we're back to that position, aren't we? We are. They will look at them and say, "Obviously, a girl." So put puberty blockers in, breast binders, and the rest. I, I mean, I, I find it absolutely baffling. Thank God, a lot of effeminate boys who are born around my era didn't have to go through that, or, or yes. butch girls, uh, tomboys, tomboys, boys, yeah. and effeminate boys. Look, the fact of the matter is, is that in America, there is a very strong religious right that we don't really have here. No, no, no. And for example, um, the head of Mermit, Susie Green, had, was caught on camera saying, you know, oh, our kid was born. 
you know, penis was tiny and my husband was definitely against having a gay boy. So it's much easier to say, I've got a daughter. So a lot of the religious right, uh, um, you know, are saying, no, I don't have a gay son. I don't have a gay son. I have a gay daughter. It's huge in Iran as well, funnily enough. Really? But for what's there? What is, what is there? Because homosexuality is yeah, the yeah. ultimate sin. If, it's, if you can call your son a daughter, no problem. That's extraordinary, isn't it? That it's that, that's terrifying. Yeah, yeah. And of course, everything that starts in America, America sneezes, we catch the cold. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, so. so, have you had, you know, if you go back to the Doctor Who experience and they didn't tell you anything about why they were sort of like putting, uh, erasing your name, have you had general blowback for your perceived profile now from your industry in, some, in many My ways? My perceived pro. Well, you're, you're perceived, the, the, the fact that you have become known as a, you know, someone who defends J.K. Rowling. And... Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yes, I mean, people know, I, I recently did a film and there were quite a few young people in it. And, and I heard through the grapevine that they were very confused because they liked me as a person, but they didn't like uh, what my um, point of views was. And I said to them one day, what do you think my point of views are? Oh, that you're a transphobe and you hate people. And I said... Do you want to know something? It'd be really interesting if you if you if you sat down and actually yeah. read what I've written. Yeah, yeah. And then I said, "Have you read what J.K. Rowling yeah. wrote?" No, 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 I haven't. But I've heard that she is transphobic, mm. and they all said this. And I mm. thought, ah, mm. well, here we are then. You know, it's like a it's like a game of Chinese whispers that's gone mad mm. um, because I don't believe most people have read it. it in its entirety mm. and put it in context with everything mm. she said i mean I, I you know i have spoken to her i do know her opinions on it and it's it, it's it, again a, a wealthy woman uh, successful with opinions about um, womenhood mm. Mm. no not having that Again, it's a form of misogyny. Yes, she doesn't need to do any of this, does she? She does it because she believes in it. She believes in it, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And has really people saying, you know, she could have just shut up about it. Why yeah. should she shut up about yeah, it? Yeah. She's actually put herself in, the, in a very precarious position and kept on fighting. Mm, and mm. so few people uh, come out and say anything p positive about it. I mean, there have been notable exceptions. I'm amazed that still five years on, we haven't added a massive tally to, mm. uh, yeah. to it. But, uh, you know, we just got to keep going. Do people, in, do active friends of yours, do they sort of get in touch and say, I, I agree with what you're saying, actually, but I can't possibly say? Really? A lot. And I say to them, listen, if you're not ready to get involved, don't. Right. Don't. But some people will get involved by default, yeah. by making a mistake, yes. you know, by accidentally being invited to a, uh, a, a, a party one night and people will tell different programs and uh, pronouns. And if one of, you get one of them wrong and the person doesn't like you, you can be reported for hate speech. And, uh, you know, there's a lot, uh, <laughs> you know, you've got to tread a very thin tightrope yes. um, yeah. uh, because you have to adhere to the scriptures and not deviate in any way at all. Do you, I mean, you you were in some very famous comedies, uh, obviously going back to Absolutely Fabulous and, and many, many more, but obviously you've done stage work too. Mm. Um, which is your favourite? Do you have a favourite? Yes. Television, um, film? Television, stage? film, so I can forget my lines and we can do it again. Right, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On stage, a little bit more awkward. Yeah. <laughs> yes, line. <Yeah. laughs> Odd. Yes. No, but do you do you, do you get much pressure out of it now? I mean, do you, what, what do you think of? You see, the reason I ask is we've had quite a few comedians on here, mm -hmm. and comedy, for better or worse, seems also to be pretty much on the front line of a lot of what we're talking about. <laughs> I, mean, do, I mean, do you find that it is? has suffered as a result? Do you think things aren't as funny as they were or, or what? I mean, that's a very broad statement, I know. Um, I think there are still people who are very funny, but I'm talking as a general rule. I mean, if you look at you know, com the comedy channels, there's a pool of about 15 people that they use over and over and over again. 
Um, about two people out of that would be um, vaguely amusing. Um, Ricky Gervais, thank God for Ricky Gervais, yeah. um, who is just, you know, amazing. Mm. And, you know, and, uh, and is also complicated. You can't just look at what he says and say, is that him? Because he's managed to create a very thin line yes. of yes. who is Ricky Gervais and the character of Ricky Gervais. And sometimes yeah. they're indistinguishable. Yeah. So he's very clever and he toys with you. Mm. Jonathan Pye is another very yeah. good one. Andrew Doyle's another very good one. But it's funny because it's the ones fighting back. Woke comedy, there's nothing amusing about woke comedy at all. Nothing. You could sit there going, oh, I, I, that was clever. But it, nothing that makes you laugh. No, it's not joyful. It's not, it's not a fun. But I mean, what is there, could there even be such a thing as woke comedy? Is there such a thing as woke comedy? Uh, well, they, they're certainly trying. I mean, if you look at anything on television at the moment or, or on, on the channel, these game shows and everything, I, I mean, it's, there's a dearth of, I mean, there's, there's no laughter, there's no joy, there's, there's sneering, there's smugness, there's, mm. it's always political, there's easy targets, you know, Boris Johnson, oh, Trump, oh. Yeah, yeah. you know, like we haven't heard these jokes before, we know yeah, they're idiots. Yeah, yeah. Um, but woke comedy pushes, uh, um, non-woke comedy pushes the boundaries. And I think what we're seeing now is a lot more people who are going to push the boundaries and no one's no one's advocating for a day uh, to go back to the 70s where you know yeah. people were openly racist and whatever no one's asking for that this is always our argument oh you want to you love know, thy neighbor or whatever yeah, yeah you know you want to do that yeah. no people people talk about gimme 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 quite often to me now saying i wish we had it back now i wish we had it and I used to, I, the point I make to them is it would never, ever, ever be made now. Now, but I, right, this uh, was 20 years ago, mm -hmm. yeah, 20 years ago, um, but this was with Kathy Burke. Mm -hmm. And you were playing flatmates? Yes. Yes. But what is their basis for saying that it wouldn't now be on? Well, there would be no producers, number one. Uh, there'd be no uh, uh, um, person to, because at top, the, we're doing a comedy like that. The next step of the series would have to push even further yes because that's what it, the point is you have yeah, to push yeah. further and per there's just not no way we would get away with anything um where we'd want to go there would be yeah. there, there would be no point no no reason and also it would come from a, a lot of flack of because if you make a joke about which we used to make jokes about you know terrible things disabled people being gay people but, they, we, yeah. uh, but making fun of everybody yes, you know we yes. made fun of absolutely everybody yeah yeah and now, of course, people would um, uh, just call that um, uh, um, cruelty mm. and call for accountability. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I don't know. I don't know. Do you think that basically then, James, it means that the creative world, for want of a better expression, uh, acting is just not maybe as much fun as it was now? I mean, would you, would you, what would you say to somebody like some 17-year-old who wants to become an actor um i'd say well he'd probably be all right because they don't forget the drama schools are now all enthralled to this so they'd probably are teach they? it yes apparently um rather it's a very different place now than it than it was um back then um they probably are the lucky ones they've been brought up that it's perfectly normal to introduce mm -hmm. yourself with pronouns and everything which like i said is absolutely fine if you want to do it it's the insistence that, you know, if I have pronouns, you're a cis yeah. human being. No, I'm not a cis human yeah, being. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a man, that's it. I but still haven't actually quite worked out where cis comes from. What? Well, uh, it, it's old Latin for something. So it's a word that's been around forever, but it basically means you're not trans. Right, okay. Okay, so it's almost like, let's just say going back, uh, you know, and, and we were uh, fighting for gay rights, mm. and we said to straights, okay, now you're, we're knowing you as giraffe straight. So you have to refer to yourself as a, as a giraffe straight, right. which means you're not gay. Right. Okay. Okay. It, okay. it makes that much sense. <laughs> yes. Um, so they would be, I guess, a young actor would be kind of used to this. Mm. Um, I think. I think. I feel for the uh, my age actors and slightly yeah. younger who feel pressured into mm. doing it. Mm. And also, if only gay people can play gay roles, what if you're a young gay man and you're not ready? To come out of the closet well exactly i yeah. mean uh, exactly. Th there's lots of different issues mm -hmm. so no it's not as much fun put it like that when you you've always been an actor haven't you yeah yeah always I have. did you so what you you 
Did you, was your family a creative family or not? Uh, no, not really. No, I, <laughs> no, I just sort of, um, it was the only thing I was interested in really. Yeah. So, um, you know. Um, How does one know that? When did you know that? When? I, well, I was in a production of um, Midsummer Night's Dream when I was 12 uh, and I met a great friend of mine, Charlie Edwards, who's now a very successful actor. And then we did Oliver the year before. And we used to just dream about this. And, and all yeah. we wanted to do was to be actors, yeah. you know. But we were at very boring prep in public schools. I mean, we were, you know, you know, if they wanted us to play rugby the entire time. So, <laughs> so you were, but you did do amateur, you know, you did the amateur dramatics at school and all the all very, that, much so, very yes. much so, yes, very yeah. much so. Yeah, my my uh, Derek Cannon and Martin Tyrrell were my two um, men who really pushed me, right. and I owe them a huge debt. Yeah, and uh, but staying away from theatre, right? That's 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 still the case now. Yeah. I'm staying away from theatre for the moment. Right. Yeah. Right, yeah. I because am. you were in, you, you got a, I remember you were, which, is it right to say one of the best newcomer awards, the Ian Charles um, Award? I, I won um, the best comedy newcomer for Thin Blue Line, and then I did a performance of um, uh, Julius Caesar playing Cassius, right. where I, it was, I got the second prize, uh, Ian Charles Award, which is the best classical acting under 30, oh. which John Peter used to yeah, give. Yeah. and. Um, the jump from the Sunday Times. Yes, Peter, yes, um, yeah. So I think I'm one of, proud of that very, yes. very much. So, um, what's in the offing generally at the moment then with you? Well, you know, I'm, I, I've got a film out. I think next year. Um, I don't ask me the title because well, they're, they're okay. changing it. All I know it involves food. Okay. Um, and I, I'm not even sure. It, probably Netflix, but I'm not even sure about that. Right. Um, and, and you know, and, and I'm also working a lot with Black Octopus Productions who make horror films, Hayden Hewitt directs. So, I'm, you know, I'm doing things, but doing things um, with people that mm. A, want to work with me and I want to work with them. Well, but <laughs> it's a recipe for, you know, a wonderful life. Is it well, not? it could be, it could be, you know, yeah. just with a little bit more money, but it would help. <laughs> yeah, it would help. <laughs> Wouldn't we all, yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you so much for coming. Oh, what, what, uh, yeah, pl thank pleasure. you very much. Um, we have a few, uh, just a few questions more to ask for our, our exclusive members. Yep. Um, but so for the time being, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, that's it for so what you're saying is, wasn't that nice? Um, we shall see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as three pounds per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.